What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Camera Real One. This is Lee, and yes, today's the day. We're in a different office space, of course. This is where I do my work and stuff, but uh, today we'll be talking about how to make a copy stand. And yeah, most people that are doing this, you know, DSLR, mirrorless, negative scanning, they have a copy stand, but uh, a normal person would get on Amazon and they would, you know, buy whatever copy stand in a cheap, you know, bracket, around $100, $200 bracket. But I realized that number one, there, there were some bad ratings. And number two, I think in my honest opinion, I think they're kind of expensive. So I did not opt out to do that. And some people told me to do the whole, you know, get it in a scanner, like the Epson V600. And I remember back in the days, my art director did not like the V600 as for, it's not for professional work from what I remember. So I think he told me to get the V800 at the time and that was so expensive and it's still expensive right now. So I'm not doing that route, of course. And so today we'll be using some simple office supplies and hopefully you guys follow along. And also one more thing, I'm going to show you guys my process and also show you guys how I messed up and show you guys how I kind of like fix that issue. So hopefully you guys see every single thing a part of my process because my errors might be beneficial to some of you guys. So you'll see in the video. So without further ado, let's begin guys. All right, so just to let everyone know that all the products that you see in this video is listed down below in the description. So feel free to take a look at that. So essentially we are taking a monitor stand to make this copy stand. So I'm just showing you guys how to install it. It does come with a manual. And essentially you screw three screws at the bottom, you connect it to the pole. And once that's done, you take the other part of the base and you screw two screws in the back and you secure it at so. And now here's the monitor holder right here. And I just need to screw the screw where we will insert the monitor plate. So there we go. That's the monitor plate that we will normally put a monitor on, but since we're not using that, we're just gonna screw it back on. And here are the tripod screws right here. And here is me with the tripod head, trying to figure out which one fits with which. Is it gonna be one fourth or three eighth? And of course, in the end, it was a three eighth. It falls off. And uh, yeah, it will fit perfectly. And now this is the hardest part, guys. This thing needs to fit inside the monitor plate right there, but it doesn't. So you need a drill bit. So uh, luckily I have a drill at home and there's a drill bit right there. And I'm basically making the hole slightly bigger. And I'll check every time when I get deeper and I'm just doing the same process over and over again. And yeah, it took a little while, but uh, just take your time when you're doing this part and now it fits. So I basically install the tripod head onto the monitor stand as so, and I get a flat head screwdriver just to secure it. Then later I get my L bracket and this is where my defaults comes, of course, with pay attention. I'm basically gonna put this K1 with this macro lens with L bracket and all this, there's a leveler right there just to make sure I'm level. And I'm gonna put it on this tripod head thinking that this is a great idea, but you'll see what happened. But most people with mirrorless system, this is just fine because mirrorless system are light, a bit lighter. The K1 is very heavy. And as you can see, it kind of dips down a little bit. Essentially, once I secure it, it will dip down a bit more. Every time when I would level the camera, I will have to over level it, secure it and let it like dip down a bit to kind of like, you know, compensate for the heaviness. And uh, yeah, it was a pain. And basically, as you can see, I took off the L bracket and uh, yeah, the tripod head that I was using was not good. It was, it cannot hold this heavy camera pretty much. Basically, I'm using stamps as film because I don't have my film yet. And so I went out to find me a fluid head because using a tripod head, you're you're working with XYZ access and I just don't want to deal with that. That's just too much, you know, to focus on. So with the fluid head, you're just pulling back and forth, right? So you're just working with those access right there. And so there you go. 
a lot easier. So definitely get a fluid head if you're doing this. And so this is the same fluid head I used for my first episode on Camerville. I just found it out the blue, so I'm, I'm glad I kept it. It was a cheap Amazon basic. I'll leave a link below, of course. And as you can see, now I could mount the camera onto the fluid head with no problem. And it fits just fine. It was really easy to level it. And of course, you need, you need your light for your negative scan. So here is a LED light that I have that I, use, I used to use for illustration. So it just turned on and essentially that is about it pretty much. That was a simple rig that I came up with to do the DIY. I'm using the stamps as a placement for the actual film that I'll do maybe in the next week or two. But essentially this is what it comes down to. And I hooked up a remote control so I would never have to touch the camera and I would set it to pixel shift. And yeah, you just control it just like that and it will just work. But as you saw in the video, I also left all my errors in there, like the L bracket, the tripod head. I just want to show you guys that just in case you guys have other means of scanning things because everyone have a different situation. You guys might have, I don't know, compact cameras, something in that nature, but I'm using a Pentax K1 with a macro lens at 100 millimeter. So that was really heavy, of course. So for my situation, that was not a good idea. On paper, it looked like a good idea, but thankfully I had like a fluid head around and I was able to put the fluid head and take off the L bracket and it was just fine. So I think I will stick with this setup for quite a bit. And maybe about the next two weeks, I'm going to do a follow up video to this video and show you guys how to scan your negatives and uh, how picture shift worked out and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys check me back in the next two weeks and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy. Peace.